Okay guys, what we're going to talk about how to go about changing tools and tool holders once you've applied tool paths in Mastercam mill turn. So I have a file here, the little, little cat file we have, and I've already done, I've already gone through the setup. Uh, we've done other videos about how to set the parts in Mastercam mill turn. I'm just going to go straight into tool paths here. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do a facing operation. And I'm just going to use the generic library that comes with, you know, uh, Mastercam here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this tool. We're going to go ahead and make him, edit him. We're going to make him tool number one. It's about the only thing I'm going to change. This is an upper or lower turret. So I may even change the name here and call him, give him my abbreviation and say UL for upper left. And then go ahead and call him a, a face turn OD tool. Keep it simple. We'll go ahead and accept the, the default stuff. Just take one pass and we face them off. Now, with this tool, we also have um, a lower turret. So at the same time, while it's facing over here, I'm going to face, I'm going to change my axis combination and go to the lower right. And I'll go ahead and pick a tool here. I'm going to make him tool number one as well. Maybe we give him a different offset number. And I'm going to call him LR for, sorry, LR for lower right. And call him the same thing. It's going to be a face, turn, OD tool. Keep it real simple here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and face him off. So this looks pretty good. And what I want to show you is if I go to the, to the setup manager here tool setup manager. I have these two tools, one's for upper turret, one's for lower turret. And if you hover over them, it'll even tell you what they are. This is a insert up, lower cross. And this one over here is going to be, oops, it's insert up as well. I'm going to up here. I'm going to highlight them and I'm going to just say load them onto the machine and they get loaded up. What I want to see, if I go up and I say view this component, this one puts it in the right holder here. Kind of like that. Look at this one here as well. If you're using common tools, what you want to look for is these tools are sticking out way too far. And if I go up here and look at the whole component, if I look at the whole turret, right? And if I decide to push this tool too far in, then I'll get a violation into the turret. It'll show up in the verify. Let's go ahead and take a look at that, just so we can see what we're talking about. I'm going to take this through the IOF, and then we'll run simulation. We'll go ahead and launch this. Wait for the machine to come up here. There we go. There's our upper lower turret machine here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hide the, the housing and get rid of some of these uh, lines. I'm going to hide the workpiece and let's look at just the stock. So in this example, I already have the part transferred over. And here's our raw stock right here. These these holders are sticking out way too far and they would just, they wouldn't run correctly. They would just cause a bunch of chatter. You know, and these are stick tools. You know, obviously, if you have capital tooling, we'd be talking about something different. I'm going to go ahead and close this down, minimize this, and let's go up here and we'll go back to the tool manager. And let's talk about uh, modifying this. So if I right-click, I'm, I'm back in the tool setup manager. If I right-click here and I say set projection link, I just want to bring this tool down a little bit. So I can bring him down. It visually shows it to me. I'm going to get just past the note of the tool there. So I'm going to go minus inch and a half. I'm going to go ahead and accept that. And I'll do the same thing for the bottom one. I'm going to set the projection. Bring him down, say, about a minus inch and a half. All right. That looks good. We'll select all. Actually, before I go anywhere, let's go back to it. I right-click and say view the component, turret and all. This is the right projection here, but then we have this tool that's violating, 
it's hitting this turret here and I think we're gonna have the same thing on the bottom as well the bottom we have clearance it's not gonna hit anything right let's see how this looks in this house this <laughs> we'll see how this looks in simulation go back to the simulation and what we're trying to do from simulation is get feedback and make sure that all your components are working right everything's located correctly I teach this all the time and I'm always telling students be honest with yourself make sure the components and how you're defining them in your simulation are correct and what I like to do is keep this window open here and minimize everything which is uh, just a report here and you can tell this tools already read which means it's, it's violating this component right here. So it's, it's crashing in, quote unquote, it's crashed into the turret. It'll go ahead and run. You'll get, you get some feedback here. Let's go up here, click through, and it's showing that it's crashing. So we got a bunch of crashes going on here. Let's go ahead and fix this. So the bottom turret seems to be okay. There's not a problem here. How do we fix the top turret? Let's go up here, go back to our our tool setup manager. I call it the turret manager. So if you hear me say turret manager, it's just, it's actually tool setup manager. I'm gonna take this tool on the top turret and I'm going to uh, remove him. Okay, put him back in the machine group. He is not loaded up. I'm gonna right click and edit this tool. Now I'm gonna change the holder length. We'll say, uh, Let's take two inches off them, make them four inches. Now I'm we'll gonna go ahead and reload them back up. Now I believe I'm gonna have to set the projection back up because now he's too far down. So we'll go ahead and bring him back up to zero. Maybe a little more. We'll bring him back up, get past that knuckle a little bit. How about we go half inch? That seems to be the right projection now. And he's also short enough not to violate the turret either. So that's that looks good right there. Go see our result here. Go back into simulation. Good. And keep in mind, these are just standard tools, 2D tools out of MasterCam. Uh, we have other videos, I believe, that shows how to create 3D tooling. And you can do this with 3D tools as well. That looks a little better right there. Not getting any any errors. If I run this, that looks pretty good. I got a collision right here. Let's go double click on that. Not really sure which one is doing that. I believe I have my uh, proximity alarm on. If I rewind this. Let's run this again. I think we're okay. That looks good. Now, how about a drill? Just real quickly, let's do a drill operation. I'm not gonna machine the whole part. Just wanna kinda show you all the ins and outs of what you have to change uh, if you're using just standard tools. There's nothing wrong with using all the 2D tools out of MasterCam. Uh, let's go ahead and go back to the top turret here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a drilling operation. And, what, and I believe it's a, it's a three quarter drill I'm just going to take this tool, edit him, set this to zero so he can be a cub drill. If I, if I draw this, this is the tool that I have. I don't change anything else, just make him a flat bottom indexable drill. We'll go ahead and call him tool. Let's move him up a bit. We'll call him tool five. Call him three quarter index drill. Fees and fees, we just leave him alone. We'll maybe call him 500. Be very conservative here. And then the depth, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to move this around so I can zoom in. I'm going to drill to the back of that bore right there. Don't add any drill tip compensation or anything. And I'll select OK to that. Right. Let's see what that tool looks like. I'll come over here back to my quote-unquote turret manager 
And if I right click and I say load this onto the turret, and I want to see what this tool looks like. He is, that holder is way too big <laughs> and he's sticking out way too far and it would cause a bunch of issues. So we'll go back and we're going to go ahead and remove him. And let's edit this tool. Keep in mind, it's a 32 millimeter, which means that's the, that's the size of the bore. I want to edit this guy. Go to parameters. I'm sorry, holders. I want to change this to a 32 millimeter. Inch and a quarter. You can even round it off. Inch and a quarter. I am going to remove the chamfers here, or the, the, the angles here. Zero, zero. Draw this tool. Now he's starting to change right. Look different. I don't believe I didn't bother to measure, but if I select OK and let's reload him back up again, let's go ahead and view this. He's still sticking out too far. We can change the projection, but at this point, I believe I can measure and analyze the distance. I'm going to see from here to here. It's a little over two inches, and I believe the correct measurement, if I measure the distance, is going to be from here to here. This is the camp. So we are looking at two inches. So I would like this holder, if I'm going to correctly define him and put him into the sleeve, make him two inches long. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. And keep in mind, I'm just doing this on the fly. You can make the edits to these tools and save them to your library and these changes become permanent. You don't have to do this every single time you select the tool. You know, We highly advise uh, editing tools and up saving and updating your libraries. Let's go to the holder here. The length of this holder we got to set to five. We'll make them two inches. Subtract two inches from here. And I'm going to draw this. So we still have this tool sticking out very far. We can change the size of the tool, the length of it. to make changes here. But let me see if I can get this part to choke up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and minus, I believe, another inch and a half will probably do me right. He's, he's right. I think that's that's a fair enough right there. Select OK to this. Let's go ahead and load him. Let's see what this looks like. We'll go to the view to the component. That's looking pretty good right there. Okay. Of course, I don't have any uh, accurate dimensions for a three-quarter. I mean, all manufacturers have different lengths, so it can be a a two by or a three or four or five, you know, times diameter to, you know, depth times diameter. We'll go ahead and leave it like that. Then we go to verify. We won't have a tool that's sticking out, you know, too far and not defined correctly. Common things that you do as, as you're working with mail turn, you either it's a, I highly recommend uh, using 3D tooling. Make sure you have the correct holders. These are just standard holders for this example here. You, know, you might be using some Eppinger holders. You might be using some, you know, capto holders, you know, cat five, cat six, and be using capped holders. And maybe I'll do another example of how to create those and, you know, bring these holders in and that could be another exercise but the way this looks this looks correct I like it there's not too big of a projection here go ahead and run this that looks pretty good right there and we would continue on doing this with any additional tools